A few years ago, we did a video on alcohol and spoke about how, for the most part, it's pretty bad for you, a net negative, but you can say that about almost anything now. Eating out at restaurants, binging on junk food, going to McDonald's, even smoking tobacco, cigarettes, but there are many people who have done these things and they are over 100 years old, and that's kind of crazy considering most people are getting very, very sick in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. The two considerations are how metabolically healthy you are and other environmental factors. So your physical body and the physical environment. If every single thing in your lifestyle was perfect, you could drink half a bottle, a whole bottle of wine every night and still be healthier than 99.9% .9 of people. But if you had liver or organ damage, from past diets or medications, live and work in a high radiation, high EMF environment. Perhaps you have a lot of toxins in your lifestyle, air pollution, whatever it is, the food, the water. Alcohol can be a catalyst for a sharp decline in your health. I think a pretty good anecdotal example of this is most people partying in their late teens to early 20s, and since they're still relatively young without much health issues, they're able to do it. However, those years age them drastically because they were living off dollar pizza slices, not sleeping, and drinking enough alcohol to kill a dog every night for years and years and years. Now, I used to work in restaurants, and you know, when people are paying a lot of money for stuff, they expect you to know a lot about the food and wine, so some of that has carried over here, but I never really drank that much myself, I mean, outside of uh, the water kefir that we have now on Frankie's Free Range Foods. And uh, just like there are two lifestyle considerations, there are two main factors in determining what alcohol is the healthiest or least bad for you. One is the quality, what it was made from, how it was made, and two is how you feel after drinking it. Because you can analyze it all you want, but you might have missed something and you weren't there when they were making it. My understanding of how each alcohol is made from being a bartender allows me to you know, look at a menu at a restaurant and figure out pretty quickly what the healthiest option is going to be, or in the worst case, just avoid something altogether. And if you make the right choice, even if you down a bottle of wine or one too many shots, you shouldn't be waking up with a hangover. Yeah, you might not feel the best, but there's no reason to suffer. So the quality of the alcohol is broken down into how the ingredients were grown, just like how the food is grown, what we're putting in our bodies and our diets, to how the alcohol was made. And a stark contrast here would be an organic, biodynamic, natural wine compared to some cheap, off-the-shelf vodka. The grapes used to grow that wine are free of agrochemicals, herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, glyphosate, no toxic pesticides or negative things, and the winemaking process is natural. They're not adding stuff to it, no chemicals, there's no carcinogens or negatives that are added along the way. Cheap vodka, on the other hand, is made with many low quality grains, full of chemicals before step one. They use commercial yeasts and low quality water, which is probably heavily polluted, fluoride, chlorine, who knows what, various chemicals and toxins. And even though distillation and filtration removes some negatives, much of the residues remain and packaging in a cheap plastic bottle definitely isn't helping with the added downsides. So another comparison that's not as obvious is scotch versus bourbon. And I've had scotch a few times without ever getting a headache. You know, two, three glasses, completely fine. Whereas one shot of bourbon gives me a migraine within the hour. And when you look at the process, although both are technically considered whiskey by definition, it's kind of silly. You know, a spirit distilled from malted grain, especially barley or rye. That, that's the only general definition of whiskey. Scotch is made with malted barley in new or used oak barrels, whereas bourbon is made with corn in new charred oak barrels. Low quality corn and carcinogens from the barrel char are enough to make what would seem like two similar spirits 
very different in how you feel after drinking them. You know, it's kind of crazy, actually. Then you can make comparisons by country. You know, maybe drinking American beer makes you sick, mass-produced, low-quality ingredients, whereas German beer, you feel good, you're completely fine. And people say this a lot with wheat. When Europeans travel to America and they try to eat bread, they get sick. Or when Americans go to Europe and eat bread, they can eat bread just fine, whereas they were gluten intolerant here in the U.S. The quality of the water, the grains, the process by which the beer is made is usually much closer to natural. And sometimes that comes with an increased price, especially for American-made spirits. But a lot of European countries have very affordable, naturally made alcohols, table wines, mainly because they're less commercialized and people are still doing stuff in their homes the natural way. And there's really so many alcohols to choose from and the high quality versus low quality version can really apply to each one, but it's hard to know what it was made from, how it was made, and if you ask the waiters or whatever, they're probably not gonna know. But back to what we said earlier about how you feel after drinking it, experimenting in some cases is the only way to know, but you don't wanna make stupid choices off the bat. So over here, I kinda of put from best to moderate to worst based on my understanding of these alcohols and personal experiences. Wine is usually the safest bet. That includes cider, really anything made from a fruit. White wine is less inflammatory because the tannins in the red wine do need to be processed by the liver. Champagne and Prosecco have yeast and usually some stuff added to it, and I've always had a problem after I drink that stuff. There's too much in it for the body to process. And something like a sangria, which is usually made with cheap, low-quality stuff, you want to avoid. But even if it's not an organic or biodynamic wine, going with a white wine that's from Europe, French, Italian, Spanish wine, is almost always a safe bet. Beer typically won't make you feel too bad because it's a more natural fermentation process and, like wine, retains some B vitamins. That, plus the lower alcohol content, you're hydrating yourself more, make it harder to feel like crap, unless you're just downing the cheapest stuff you can get your hands on. You know, if you have a nice draft beer that's not stored in an aluminum can or a plastic bottle, that's the thing, guys. Even when you're drinking this stuff, we're talking about good quality, going organic, making the best choices. If you choose crappy spirits or wine, whatever, for any of these, you're probably gonna feel bad. Now, when you move on to spirits, the higher alcohol stuff, vodka, gym, rum, tequila, whiskey, in almost every case, more expensive stuff will be higher quality and you won't feel as bad, but you know, drinking 30, 40, 50 glasses of scotch every time you go out is not exactly realistic. A potato vodka or organic vodka is going to be way better than the main brands, but you really wanna do your research on your favorite types of vodka, see how they're made, what ingredients are in them, what type of water do they use. You can contact the manufacturer, the company, and they will tell you all of this. It's pretty easy to find out. Uh, something like gin though, the botanicals they use in there are just another thing the body has to process. Same with a lot of liqueurs that have chemical flavorings added, whether it's chartreuse, Chambord, there's so many to list. Absinthe with those very high phytochemical flavonoid anti-nutrient like roots and herbs and stuff that's kind of nasty that they put in the alcohol and add to it. Very, very, very hard on the liver. Pretty bad, pretty bad. Those might actually be one of the worst things for you to drink just because it's so much for the body to process. So a few things are kind of questionable, like rum, tequila, whiskey, very subjective to the quality and aging process. A darker spirit can indicate more compounds in it, like rum that's heavy on the molasses, which means it might be high in iron or things that are not so great for the liver. And uh, if I feel a little too horrible from holding a glass of white wine, <laughs> then I'll switch to the scotch or tequila or something else. I just, I just feel weird drinking white wine. Anyway, beer and cognac are usually decent choices, but most restaurants don't have the quality selection. Like they're just gonna have the regular commercial beer choices and they won't even have cognac or they'll have something ridiculous like Hennessy. Uh, so 
I guess, unless you're going to nicer, higher end restaurants that have a, a very good spirit selection, you're going to kind of be out of luck. It's very, very possible you're going to be out of luck. Um, I mean, one example is I went to this uh, burger restaurant for one of the reviews and they had like apple cider on draft, which was like some organic Spanish, which, which is excellent, excellent, excellent. It's just, that's not really going to come up that often unless you're going to these higher quality places out to eat. Overall, since the wine and beer do have some B vitamins, they are less processed, they have a better hydration content, they're generally the good choice to make overall if you can find that quality and you want to feel the best. If you go for the hard liquors, then you're going to want to spend a bit more money for a quality product and do your research on those companies. I mean, you want to do the research anyway if it's something you always drink, but if it's just on a whim, you're kind of using this information to make an educated guess. And I mean, there, there's so many things I missed here, you know, fortified wines, things like sauterne. But again, back to the more expensive stuff being better, higher quality ingredients, that's usually a pretty good principle to follow. And uh, what might be more important than all this stuff is the ice or the glassware used. Because if you go to a restaurant, they're using ice from tap water, which is full of crap, probably more than any of these alcohols will ever have. And, and the glass might have residue from commercial dishwashing detergent. So th that's a really significant deal. And if you, you're really crazy like me, you'd order like a bottle of mineral water or Pellegrino, whatever the restaurant has, you'd rinse the glass out yourself and then have them pour the alcohol in it. If, if you want to get really, really crazy with it and spend a few more dollars to make sure you, know, you don't order something on the rocks and you make sure that the glass is rinsed, that's, that's definitely something to consider. Yeah, I mean, obviously going higher quality is good, but you know, why, why drink that crappy ice with it, you know? Always downsides to everything, guys. Too much to think about, but you know we can do our best and just make choices and then see how we feel afterwards and make sure not to make the same mistake again if you know you drank something that doesn't make you feel so good. But thank you guys for joining me. Uh, hopefully this helps you guys out. And you know if you do sit at home and drink and, and enjoy things at house parties on your own, then you're just going to be doing a lot of research and you have a bit more freedom. Uh, this glob of information is more for if you go to a restaurant, you see what they have available, everything, and kind of make the best guess. But you guys can go to frankdestefano.com to support me through all of my businesses. Outside of that, please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, as I said, guys, check out frankdestefano.com. I'll see you guys for the next video.